Hello there. Welcome back to another tutorial. To begin with, I'm going to show you how you would calibrate the rear of the head. So before you use the chin in the top of the head to calibrate, this time you'll be calibrating using the lateral distance between the ears, like so, since you cannot see the chin. Uh, and adjust the canvas image as standard until you're happy. I'm doing this really quickly um, because you already know how to do all this. Um, you're going to want to make sure your front and rear view canvases are perfectly centered and that may take a while. So once you've done that, the next thing we should do is position the side canvases correctly. We do this by aligning the edge of the flat section of the face. So where the hair drops down from the forehead, I would call that the flat section. Um, and we align that with the front plane. It's really simple. It's not necessary you do this, but I think it helps. It sort of creates a boundary while you're working, which allows you to see your progress. Um, so take your time on this, don't rush, but basically anything in front of that line is gonna be in ultra high detail and you're gonna spend ages on it. And as you sort of work back from there, it doesn't need to be so high detail. So I'd like to align the canvas thusly, basically. So once you're sort of okay with that, just tweak all the images, make sure everything is perfectly aligned and shortly we'll be ready to model. So moving all these bits about, um, things are going to unalign again so you've got to make sure all of the pairs sort of go here together. Um, and like here, I'm trying to align it dead center. So the tip of the nose is probably the best place to do that, or the septum, um, because it's like a actual space on the screen that you can see the center of. Like you could try and do it between the eyes, but you've got to sort of guess where halfway is. So I would recommend tip of the nose for that. And also, bear in mind the footage now is currently sped up 900%. So I'm really trying to reiterate the setup is as important as the model making. So just adjusting, readjusting, but yeah, it takes time and like anything in life, it, the good things, they take time. So rotating that again slightly, um, just to match them up. almost there not too worried about the, the rear of the head not being 100% right it's the front face section that we really need to care about right and now we are done with the canvases so it was at this point editing the footage that I realized I'd messed up do you see the problem so the photo I took was correct. However, Fusion 360 decided to flip it or mirror it horizontally, um, which went completely under my radar. It won't be until the last few episodes that I'll correct this. Not an issue though, but do not make this mistake. If you're following on with the photos I used, copy me, I'll show you how to fix it later. For now though, we begin modeling. So start by selecting create form in the toolbar, then selecting the purple plane tool and then select the plane you'll be working on and click and drag to create a small subdivided rectangle on screen and then press OK. Click and drag a box around the rectangle until it's highlighted and select modify in the toolbar. So allow me to explain the modify tools. You have up and right arrows. They do as you would expect. So up only goes up and down, right only goes right and left. There's a small square which is a free move tool, so it'll do up, down, left and right, so anywhere on the plane, but doesn't do depth. We have a horizontal line and a vertical line, so they expand perpendicular to the direction of the line. So if you dragged up on the horizontal line, the rectangle that we have on screen would become taller. If you drag down on the horizontal line, the rectangle would become shorter. It's the same rule for the vertical line. Move it to the right, 
and things get wider, move it to the left and things get thinner. Then there's the curved line sort of in between the, the horizontal and vertical line. And that essentially does what the vertical and horizontal lines do, but at the same time. So it's used for scaling up or down. And finally, there's the rotate tool, the arc with the circle on it. Fairly self-explanatory. So using the small curved line, we're going to scale down the rectangle. And then using the, the small square tool, we're going to relocate our rectangle like so. Scale down, relocate, and rotate until the edge aligns with a feature of the face. So by either clicking or uh, and dragging or double clicking on a line, we can select a whole line's length and adjust it with free move tool. If we click on a singular line section, we can adjust just that. Notice how I'm matching the sort of edge of our new surface with the cheek feature of the face, sort of offset from the nose. Double click on the top, top line and then select hold alt and drag up and you create a new section. Adjust the lines so the left edge of the surface follows the shape around the nose. Holding Alt and dragging, we can continue to add more sections accordingly. Um, but for now, quick adjustment. So we can click and drag like that, or we can double click to select the whole line. Alt, holding Alt, we click and drag up. So Looking at the right side of our surface, we can adjust it to follow the contours of the cheek. It's merely estimating for now all the adjustments I'm making. None of them are set in stone at all. Um, but we just want to um, sort of like curve it over the top of the cheek. Um, So you can click and select and modify individual points. Can be a little frustrating at times. There we go. Hang on, got the square. There we go. So you can click and modify a single point. For the time being, we won't be doing much of that, but as we sort of progress, we will become a lot more dependent uh, on that. So also it's worth noting when you're creating this surface you want tension in the lines that sort of subdivide your surface so basically no sharp angles and nothing that may, makes the lines look loose um, sort of think of them as like ropes you don't want them like pulled perfectly taut but you just want a nice flowing curve to them so again using that alt key combined with the freeform tool we can add more sections um, Make sure you're always selecting the outermost lines and dragging it away from the shape. And don't use the Alt key while you're dragging a section. So notice how I keep hovering over and little rectangles get highlighted. We're calling that a section. But yeah, use it on lines for now. You, yeah. And we want to take our surface up to sort of the cheekbone height. And then we're going to curve it down while rotating and take it down to the chin. Notice how I'm just adjusting it here. You usually want a line sort of lining up with the, the edge of the lips, the corner of the lips, and have a line sort of above and below. Yeah, so some more adjustments. So alt drag and then rotate and then do it again. Be careful not to make too many subdivisions on the face. Um, yeah. So rotate that. And notice now how the horizontal line tool works, how it expands vertically. So yeah, you don't want to make too many subdivisions on the face too many and the model is quite cumbersome and difficult to work with like you're having to select too many surfaces it really gets annoying um, and too few and you probably don't achieve the level of detail that you want um, but yeah so make adjustments around here I'm just sort of following the rough sort of ball of the, the, the chin there and then 
this surface um, just smoothing sort of the corners so yeah try if you can to line up a, a line with the, the the corner of the lips and have like I do just a line above and a line below it um, There we go, we're just adjusting that. Um, that's going to help with the, the shaping of the actual lips, so those sort of three lines there are quite necessary. So if you double click on that outer edge, you'll select it all. Hold the Alt key and use the Curve Line tool to expand a new section, and then use the Free Move tool to sort of line things up, drag it out a bit further. So the Curve Line Expanding tool it expands from the calculated center of the feature you're editing. So if you select a bunch of lines, it figures out like the most central point and then expands expands like radially out from there. So if the shape you had in question was a circle, it would expand perfectly. Um, so also if you select a line and then shift double click somewhere else on the line further down, you can select all the lines in between, saving you time rather than like holding control. Um, and equally by selecting a single point and then shift double clicking a point that's on the same line somewhere, um, you'll group select all the points in between. So here we go, doing a lot of point adjustment at the moment. So there we go. Shift double click and I create a group of points. It's pretty pretty cool. So we're going to want to select the line by the nose and then select the one above the lips and double click. Then we have our section. We drag it across using the Alt drag and then use the horizontal pinch tool to rescale it and do it again. This time it's sort of squiggly too much so we pinch it vertically but then we also pinch it horizontally and it straightens the line back up which is pretty cool. And then we're just going to sort of alt drag the new section and adjust accordingly and take it in. So upon reflection, it appears we have sort of too many lines in this section um, and it will be annoying to model that. Um, so we're going to resolve that in a second. Make sure you adjust the lines uh, around the nose so they're slightly offset from it as well. So yeah, move the ones up from the lips. So notice how I've got a line that's sort of going over the nostril at the moment. We're gonna wanna sort of offset it away from the nose. So it is looking crowded there, um, and we're probably going to want to delete this line in, in there. I'm going to adjust it first. Let's just, this is what I was on about, we need to give a bit of space around the nostril. But yeah, as I said a, a moment ago, these lines are a bit too crowded. So if you want to delete a line, you have to click OK on the edit form box on the right. Then you can click the line, delete it, um, and then you have to go back into modify. You can click the lines above and below and use that pinch vertical tool to bring them back together. Um, interestingly, you cannot de delete a feature while actively modifying. So now would be a good time to save your progress. Um, yeah, select modify in the toolbar again, select the two lines above and do that pinching thing. Um, so that's it for this episode. I hope this has helped. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next one. Um, thanks for listening. Bye.